Uh, thanks, Ari. Personally, I always like the sweater vest. Thanks, Arbiter. Well, regardless of how you all feel about my beard or my sweater vest, I have questions for you, Cat. Of course, ask away. If we intend to always do the moral thing, we must develop rules or maxims to shape our actions. Clarify. The morality of an action stems from the rules which govern it. No! What? Why? Rules? Aren't we going back to the same mistake as the, uh, the rule utilitarianism thing? In order to properly assess our intentions, we must therefore clearly define these rules. Uh, Prince of backing, he backed us up. This is very much a continuation of our last argument. Our intentions must be defined somehow, and we should root them in rules that shape what we should and should not do. If we are unable to define such rules, we would truly be lost. Bro, you are already lost. Um, there are certain actions which we must always avoid, like ask for clarification. There are certain things that are clearly always wrong when the maxim behind them is examined. What did, why? Clearly always wrong? Press for backing. This seems like a grand statement. Do you have an example? Lying is an example. To lie is to spread deceit among men. By a lie, a man annihilates his dignity as a man. Thus, one should never lie, ever. Um, question relevance. How is this related to everything? I am describing the first of sort of imperative, the negative sort. Kant believes that lying is one of the actions which is categorically immoral, alright? Other actions we should take at every opportunity. Ask for clarification. What do you mean by this? Certain actions are certainly always good and should be followed. Press of banking, give us an example. Helping a dying man. By attempting to render such, an ex such assistance, one respects human dignity. Thus one should always render their existence. Ah, see, the head cat also says I, can, I did the right thing. I thought you weren't much of a cat fan. Hush, validation is always nice even if it comes in the confusion back package. Validation is a trap. Don't... Okay, this is a message from me. Don't put too much value in validation. Because that's one way you can be manipulated. Like people say, hey, you're doing a good job, or say, hey, you're so smart, or hey, that, that dress looks so nice. They give you validation. They might not be telling you the truth. But it makes you feel good. So then you like them more. Validation is a very easy way to mi to manipulate people who who want validation. It's, it's, a, it's a trap. Don't. Just be careful. Anyway, helping a dying man added to the idea slate. If you take it on every opportunity. These ideas form rules we must follow at all times regardless of emotion or consequence. Ask for clarification. What do you mean by this? The maxim which we can deem to be imperatives must be treated as if they are laws of nature. Even if in a specific situation the outcome may seem personally painful, we have no choice but to follow them. Why can't I simply choose to ignore gravity? But we can go into space! I can. <laughs> My metaphor still works. Ah, uh, press for backing. Why is it a strict line? When we deem some maximum to be moral, we must follow it. For if we do not, then the power of the idea is undermined, and no good can come of it. What's wrong with undermining the power of an idea? Like, why is that... Why is that a bad thing? Huh. Question and relevance. How is this related to conclusion? It details the extent to which imperatives should affect our lives. That's the extent of the applicability of the idea. I can already, you know, think of the rebuttal to this. These rules are categorical imperatives. I mean... What if we have to lie to help a dying man? Or what if we're helping a dying liar? <laughs> you see? You see how even that, they contradict themselves? What if, yeah, what if the dying man is a... You know, is a, um... Is a, is a, is a, what do you, oh damn, I, I can't think of the word. Compulsive liar, that's right. What if the diamond is a compulsive liar? Do we still help him? Or what if we have to lie to someone to save a man's life? Do we still save him? Nonsense! 
Hold on to this moment. Can you claim that we should never lie, correct? That telling the truth is a categorical imperative? Indeed, it is the prime example of one. Right, and you also claim that we must follow the imperatives without fail, is that correct? Correct, here Jones. Well, that's interesting, because using only those two facts, it seems we are already in a worrisome place. Oh. I will admit that in most situations, lying is not the most moral of choices. But there's no denying that there's some situations where the truth can be deadly. Situations where lying would be the better thing to do. Ark. The same one was sheltering fugitives from an oppressive regime. Keeping them hidden from the forces which would prosecute them. It seems to me that keeping them hidden is clearly the right choice, but you want us to blab to every person who shows up at the door. This strikes me as empirically wrong. <laughs> oh, interesting. Way to go, Dad. Thank you. Um, not so fast, please, I think. Not... No. Um, let me just type that into Google. Google Translate. I think... I think it says not so fast. Where's my more? Google Translate? Nicht... Sean... Weeder, bitte, or just the one minute or something. Um, detect language. He. It's not Russian, it's German. S H O N. What? No, English. Not already. Not again. Oh, w e i no w i e d yeah. not again please not again please no wait 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 not not again that I don't know no, I don't know I think that's wrong uh, right you can swear in German all you want but I have a point <laughs> I think he's not so fast uh, earlier or oh, maybe it's not again. Earlier you stated that things which need qualification cannot be the origin of morality. But your prime example of an imperative just demanded qualification. Well, what do you have to say to that, Kant? Doesn't the intention of protecting those people also have value? Even from your perspective, this law seems far from universal. Nonsense! Nonsense? Dot 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 Excuse me, I have to go take my morning walk. Bye. Dot 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 he just walked off. <laughs> he does that sometimes, do not worry. Oh, you're back. Indeed, my morning walk is completed. Morning walk check. Uh, is there even warning in the intelligible realm? No, there isn't. There's floating bits of arches, though, which is pretty cool. Uh, no, there isn't. It is unacceptable. <laughs> but regardless, back to task. Socrates Jones, the kind of point you gave earlier was false. No, you are false. That one should not lie still stands as universal. Despite your objections, there's no doubt that to lie in that situation would be immoral. But then you'd get people killed. Categorical imperative stand as absolute without qualification. Is he seriously standing by his position? Is he even allowed to do that? Remember here, John's consequences are irrelevant. It's only our intention that matters. But your intention is to help those people. Your intention is to keep those people alive, to save dying people. You are lying to save dying people. <laughs> to become too invested in individual scenarios to undermine the sanctity of thought. Kant, the entire world, the whole of existence is made up of scenarios. <laughs> it's just one day after another, it's just one thing after another. That That's the whole of your living experience is scenarios. Once a maxim fulfills a universality test, it can be accepted as a categorical imperative. At that point, we are obliged to obey it always. The uh, universality test? Yeah. The methods through which we discover and ver verify categorical imperatives. Allow me to Im elaborate. In order to verify the morality of an idea, we must subject it to the universality universality test. Imagine a world in which everyone follows the maxim behind your action. 
if a contradiction or irrationality arises, the maxim cannot be moral. Uh, there we go. Explain the universality test check. All right. Hold on, hold on a moment. What the heck are these things you keep checking off? <laughs> I've created an agenda. All the tasks which I need to accomplish are presented up in sufficient detail. The events of this debate are on your agenda. How is it even possible? Careful planning. Okay. Wisdom of Socrates Jones is organized life. Ah, uh, no. No, actually it isn't. There is a a lot of wisdom to be found in chaos and flexibility. I mean, organize, to organize things is basically to reduce complexity. And, you know, to organize things is basically an, an admission that you are unable to deal with complexity. Therefore, you have to simplify things by organizing them. That's not... It's a useful thing to do, to organize things. But it's an admission of your inability to deal with complexity, really. And an organized person would be asking me questions right about now. Sure. This is getting harder and harder to deal with. I can't present something I don't understand, but I'm sh not sure how much longer I can go. I've got to find something and quick. No, just take your time. Take your time. You have all of eternity to talk to these guys. In order to verify the morality of an idea, one must be subjected to the universality test. Hmm. Press for backing. Can you back this up? We have established that our principles must unquestionably must be unquestionably moral. Yes. Well, in order to ensure this such is the case, we must create a situation where every potential question would have to be asked. How do you even do that? Every potential question would have to be asked. You can't do that. It's not actually possible. Thus, the universality test is required. All right. Imagine a world in which everyone follows the maxim behind your action. Clarify? What do you mean by this? Essentially, in every situation where someone is faced with a choice whether they would follow your maximum or not, they would follow it. This is the world which you will be imagining. Back this up. Uh, well, it's an instruction. Okay, if you don't understand, I can explain it better. If a contradiction or irrationality arises, the maxim cannot be moral. Clarify. Could you explain this further? Of course. A contradiction is a situation in which your maxim defeats itself. You say when acted? This is one way an idea can fail the universality test. And irrationality is when your maxim will create a world that is worse for wear. Do you say when added? That is the other way the universality test can be failed. Huh, interesting. Contradictions are maxims which are inconsistent with themselves. That's easy enough. Irrationalities create a world which is worse for wear. Pay attention. What do you mean by this? Sometimes the world would be would clearly be worse off if everyone followed the maxim. For example, if everyone stole from one another, our sense of security would deteriorate. It would be irrational for such a world to be. Thus, stealing is categorically immoral. Interesting. Press for backing. Can you back this up? I think this stands pretty solidly, alright? One cannot build a world which would be worse than this one. Interesting. So we challenge him with intentionalism. According to Kant, all true moral systems are intention-based and ignores consequences. But now he's saying that the rules must consider consequences, and if they create a worse world, then they're not good rules. So he's contradicting himself here. Nonsense! Immanuel Kant! What is... what was it? Kant? I think, I think it's Kant. Uh, German, damn it. K E N T. Emmanuel. K. 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 With the. Oh. K. 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 A. Dach. Brabant. Brabant. Shorter. K. N. Not K. In the T. T is taught. No, this is this can't. Can't. Okay. That's easy. What is the one thing which, from the very beginning of our discussion, you emphasize above all else? Intentionalism, of course. What we will is far more important than what we make. Right, that's what I thought. 
And that's fascinating, because checking for irrationality sounds a lot like assessing the consequences to me. <laughs> Punch you in the face. You claim we cannot will a world that is worse than the one we have now. But the fact is, the very act of assessing how the world would be gives weight to consequences. You think that you would throw this out, but instead you have this as a key step in the universality test. Determining whether your maximum your maximum is a categorical imperative is thus a fundamentally consequentialist procedure. That's true. Nonsense! Bro. The stuff on my agenda is most impractical. I demand you stop it once. No, you stop it once. Nonsense! But surely you see my point. It's quite ironic, don't you think? That's not irony. Actually, it is irony, my bad. That the process which creates the rules for your intentionalist ideals relies so heavily on assessing consequences. You talk about internal contradictions for being grounds for failure, well here's a grand one for you. The universality test would fail itself. Yeah, it would. Incredible. It seems to me that either consequences matter or your method of choosing ideas is incorrect. So which is, is it counts? Which part is wrong? Either way, it seems pretty devastating to your ideas. Consequences do matter, guys. Don't, don't, don't believe him. Although, if you want to, you know, research methods of philosophy, then, then you, can, you should look at it. Just don't believe what he says. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. This dot dot dot. Your thoughts dot dot dot. So disorganized dot dot dot. No, you. <laughs> Alright. Alright, he's gonna explode. Have my philosophical constructs thrown into the question check. You've done an excellent job here. I would be lying if I said you have not given me much to think about. Perhaps a decade of silence is in order. Silence and thought. Have we not seen here, Jones? <laughs> is it over? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I guess that's all we're gonna get out of count. And there we go. That's um. That's that chapter. It's, I mean, philosophy is, like, they get more and more complicated as they develop. So, you know, the early ones, ancient Greek and ancient Roman, they're fairly easy to understand. I mean, comparatively. They're comparatively easy to understand. Like, philosophers just get wordier and wordier as time goes on, and these days it's just... I don't know. I, I think they're... Personally, I think... The confusing complexity for philosophy, <laughs> or you know, if if the simple if simple ideas are found to have holes in them, I think a lot of philosophers end up trying to patch the holes with more complexity, which I don't think actually works. I mean, okay, I, I say it here: like fundamentally, logic is is a tool that we have invented. I mean, logic it, it's a, it's a very useful tool. But it only applies to our thoughts. I mean, if you ask a chair, you know, is, uh, is a chair logical? There's no, it's not a meaningful question because the chair doesn't think, right? No, no. Is 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 a tree logical? I mean, you might think the tree is logical, but the tree doesn't understand logic. Whereas, you know, so so logic is a is a thing that that we make up. Unlike something like gravity, you know, does, does the tree obey gravity? Well, yes, it does. It sits on the ground, right? Does the chair obey gravity? Well, yes, it does. It sits on the ground. So, you know, because logic is one of the things that we've made up, it's a system of thought that we have devised that, in some cases, approximate reality. You know, approximates the what we see in reality, but it's only something that that we can understand. It's not something that even most animals can understand. So given that it's something that we made up, it can't be the origin of things. It's a tool by which we understand things. But it's not it's it's something that we've we've made, right? It's not the origin of of things. Like the same with ideas, like the like ideas themselves are things that we experience and we use. But you know, does a rock have ideas? No. Like you know, these are things that we make up or that we experience, which, if we did not exist, would not exist in the universe, right? You know, if there are no intelligent beings to have ideas or to use logic, then those things wouldn't exist in the universe. So, you know, you can't, 
I mean, as I say, you know, the logic is useful, but if you use logic to try to find the origin of things, you won't find it because logic is not within the origin of things. Like, you know, the, the things are just, you know, chemistry and physics. That's all they are. I mean, they, they're not philosophies. Philosophies are, are something that we have created. Anyway, I'm just going to stop rambling there. When we come back, chapter 6, the end of the road. Hey, it's almost over.